Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel where today we're here at Merit Partners in Atlanta, Georgia with the most incredible display of cars. We're gonna be grabbing the keys to something rather spectacular in a moment, but firstly, I've got to say, Look at this. I came to visit Merit Partners about two years ago here in Atlanta. We went out for a drive with some of their clients with their Carrera GTs, but I'm standing here next to a rather standout F50, a Ford GT Carbon Series, the P1 VP4, lots to tell you about that car. If we come on through between a Carrera GT and a 918 Spider, this is where we have that particular F12 TDF, which we're gonna be taking a good look at today, but this is a very very homely feel. The view through to the inventory with all of the cars we can explore as well. Plus, my car is actually getting a bit of a tidy up while we're here as well. Today, I'm looking forward to sharing more of my thoughts on this when we take it out in a moment. But firstly, we've got to talk about some of the cars that are here at Merit Partners. I'm going to get straight to the point. That is a very special Ferrari F50. I mean, every F50 is a special car. There are only 349 in the world. This is car number 2002, the original Frankfurt Motor Show car. This is right here. It's not only that, though. It's a Carbon Series 4 GT right alongside it. The Carbon Series with the exposed carbon fiber stripes, the carbon fiber wheels. That's a delivery mileage car as it happens, even with the sticker protection still on the door opening latch. Next to it is a car with a bit of a personal story. I've filmed this car before, believe it or not, 10 years ago, I filmed this car, VP4, when it was in its original amethyst black paint job, this very dark purple, as it was the car that they presented at the Goodwood Festival of Speed a couple of months after revealing the production spec of the McLaren P1. This car actually comes with so many extras. It was rebuilt by the factory effectively after its original testing life. It got its new carbon fiber exposed bodywork, still has all of the original parts and is a bit of history quite literally. We happen to have a lovely example of a Carrera GT right here, another of the finest cars. I mean, we are surrounded by some phenomenal pieces of machinery here. Carrera GT with that V2N, with the manual gearbox, epic machine. 918 Spider, basalt black example, low mileage car, the hybrid record setter at the Nürburgring, obviously battled with the P1, lovely, lovely thing. Behind over here though, this is what I really, really like and it's giving me inspiration as well for this museum. The idea here that Merit Partners have gone for is to create this homely atmosphere. It's exactly what you feel, the lounge space, the pictures rotating through, the cars that are here in the showroom, the simulator. I haven't mentioned the star of the show over there, the little baby McLaren Senna in the original launch specification. The Myra Orange with the blue aero details, plus the rather lovely 997.2 GT3 RS here, the 3.8, and this view through the glass, this view out towards all of the cars, a pair of 911Rs just there, the 991 911Rs. We've got a GT2 RS, we've got a GT3 Touring. We have so many Porsches and Ferraris. Merit Partners are specialists in modern supercars, but also Porsche and Ferrari in particular, hence this. Oh, and actually, you can just spot over there the GT Black Series in the Wash Bay area, having just been cleaned up. A big thanks to them for that because it needed it. But let's talk about this car, the Ferrari F12 TDF, the Tour de France named after the legendary French race. In fact, back in the late 50s and the 60s, Ferrari were pretty dominating in the competition. The F12 TDF followed the 599 GTO as the track focused limited edition version of the F12 Berlinetta. They made a total run of 799 cars. At the time, you couldn't get one of these. Values flew up through the roof. They softened as the 812 Competizione arrived on the scene, but they have massively gone back up again recently because you can't get one. You can't get one of these. There are so few of them. And it was a car that's a little bit scary to drive, a little bit lively, a little bit on the edge. And that's one of the things that really got everybody talking about it. I mean, you've got the 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12, 780 horsepower, all to the rear wheels, seven speed dual clutch, massively wide front tires, a combination that's all about 
driving experience, invoking that feeling, that emotion. And this particular car is painted in this multi-layer Rosso F1 2007. It's a multi-layer red paint with the painted black stripes and details over the top of it. In fact, it's a very high MSRP car, this. The sticker price was loaded because of the options, all of the exterior carbon fiber, the details that it has inside. I mean, come and have a quick look at what you can see inside here we've got the alcantara we've got all the red stitching the red details and even through to the back of the car as well as we'll take a better look at with the quilting that you have on the rear deck this is just a wonderful thing it's a really really nice example and in a moment we're going to get started because we're going to be heading out to get a set tent sense of what that's about but before we do let's go for a very quick run around of the cars that are out here to pick up some of the highlights. Come on through, and this is major inspiration for what I'd like to do with the Schmuseum. The concept of walking through double glass doors from the office or lounge space out into a view of cars like this. The inventory here, and I'm gonna pick out some of the highlights. But of course, my car is over there looking much cleaner and tidier than it did. A huge thanks to the team here. But let's take a little look around. Lots of Porsches of all different generations, 964s, 993s, 996s, 997s, 991s, 992s, you name it, but lots of other cars as well. I mean, actually right now, the ultimate 997, the GT3 RS, four liter, a couple of those scattered about, specialists in Carrera GTs, another right alongside here. We've got the Heritage Edition 992 Targa, so many other things that my eyes are drawn to as we head about here. The roof right there. We've actually got another Ford GT just here as well, a one-off example as it happens. I'm gonna come straight to this trio of 430 Scuderias, but in particular these two cars, because you don't often see this. That example is in Rosso Corsa, the traditional Ferrari Red. This car is in Rosso Scuderia. Now, when they're not side by side, you don't really see the differences between them, but up close, you can see the slightly more orangey paint in the Rosso Scuderia, which is quite rare to be honest. Another car here in black, 599, loads of different Porsches tucked in around the back. Over on this side, we've actually got two GT2 RSs as it happens. The chalk or crayon car just there come past the GT3 Touring. We've got a pair of the 911Rs. Now the 911R is one of the ultimate Porsche driver's cars, manual gearbox, lightweight fly flywheel, 991 cars because of being the 991 codename derivative. But I love this view, this space, the glass upstairs. That's something I haven't yet touched with my garage, but being able to be so open with it all, it creates this homely vibe. It creates this lounge type space that you can see and that's a lot of what Merit Partners is about and that's what I've felt while I've been out here with many of their clients as well and met them before and of course today as well but I think we should head back around and go and get that TDF started up hear the V12 and get it outside into the Georgia sunshine to go and see if that truly is one of the greatest V12 Ferraris ever it is time then let's hear this V12 get it started up especially in here. Cold start, obviously now running the valves, but let's get it pulled out. Out of the showroom we go. Of course, the TDF is all about the aero. Just look at that front splitter, the lower sections. Oh, and by the way, a few other Ferraris around. <laughs> so much here to see. The F12 TDF, as I said, one of 799. Without going too much into the technical side of things, really, a demonstration of the next chapter. Obviously this launched ahead of the 812 Superfast and can be compared extensively now to the 812 Competizione. And that's what I think we're gonna to touch a little bit more on in a moment when we're out on the road with Bert, the CEO of Merit Partners. We've been in the TDF for moments and this thing, it's so aggressive. You can tell it means business. Yeah, this is a car you don't want to provoke. <laughs> you One just way to put it. <laughs> don't want to provoke this car. You just want to let it, let it. I mean, you want to drive it, but you don't want to provoke it. I think that's the best way to describe it. So I've recently driven an 812 Competizione, which is of course the follow-up to this. And I'm, I think you've driven 812 super fast. Yes. And, yes. and know what yes. that's like. And I tell you what, we get in the TDF and you immediately have this feeling that it's seriously raw. The sounds that we're hearing of small debris on the road being pinged up, the feel of the gearbox as well. You're saying as we pulled away, yeah. it, it just, it gives you a dramatic sensation instantly. 
And this is something that... Oh, that's a sweet sound. Oh, well, and, <laughs> and what, what I appreciate about this car so much is with so many of the cars now today being almost sterile until you get to 100 miles an hour, this car immediately lets you know something. We're at 50, <laughs> 60 miles an hour, and it's already getting a little bit unruly. And it's uh, it's just not a car that you want to sit back and, and and play around with too much without a healthy amount of respect. I feel like if you turn everything off, you know immediately that there's trouble ahead. Well, it's if we turned everything off, we'd go off. We'd go off the road <laughs> is what we'd yeah. be doing. It's, uh, it's not a car for the beginner, um, but it's a car that at any level you could appreciate. But I think it, if you've got some driving experience, you will, you will truly appreciate that this car means business. And it also is something that, uh, that truly engages you at any speed. So we're just obviously driving reasonably gently at the moment. But even in here, the firmness of the seats, the sounds, the sensations of it are that of a very special Ferrari. I mean, this. <laughs> There's not much to say there, is there? It's such a glorious engine note. The sound is, is perfection. I'm, I'm a big fan of Ferrari V12s. So, and, and to your point, a lot of the cars now today are, are turbo type of cars, and so you don't get that immediate um, feedback from the throttle. It takes yeah. it just a minute before you get it. With this, it's an immediate feedback from the throttle. It, it's an engine that just, it's ready to go. It's ready to perform. It's ready yeah. to just kind of leap forward. That's the way I describe it. It's almost like a leap forward. You, you push the throttle, it feels like it wants to leap on you. Um, <laughs> this crazy. guy's just decided he's going crazy. Like, he's just getting out of the way. He sees this in a TDF and he says, I want to just get out of the way. I, I think there we he go. doesn't want to sit in Atlanta traffic. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he just he doesn't. drove straight up onto the grass. <laughs> That's what we do in Atlanta. If we just get tired of traffic, we just drive on the median. That's not what we in do. this, though. We're not going up there in this. <laughs> yes. It's the extra edginess of everything adds up to a lot more than the sum of its parts. It's all these tiny little tweaks that went into the TDF. And you know what I like about it is, so many cars today, uh, the manufacturers are talking about downforce on the cars. You know, hey, if it gets to certain speeds, doubles the downforce, doubles yeah, the... Yeah. You don't talk about downforce on this car. You just talk about power, <laughs> sound, attitude. It's, That's what you talk about. It's and, like it, it has enough downforce. It has enough downforce. Absolutely. Who cares about the downforce? I don't see any <laughs> downforce. All I, all I want is to, to feel that attitude from the car, which this car gives you. It's also a numbered car. Yep. It's also that big V12. It also has the look, um, and uh, it it is it is just sensational from a sound standpoint. And we're just going around in traffic here. But even on downshifts, when I downshift right there and just barely hit the brakes, there's an aggression to yep. the downshift on this car that you just don't get. Yeah, the gearing, the, the gear is so different. <laughs> oh, I'm it is, it. it is it is special. This is the car that that if. You know, if your if your daughter was going out, your parents wouldn't want you to date this. If this was a, <laughs> if this was a young gentleman coming to court your daughter, this is not the one you, you would want your daughter to date. What an analogy! I love it. <laughs> but just listen to this. If I if I apply just a light throttle on this, how downshift. quick it is to want to downshift. Yeah. And that's not even hard. We, we our heads weren't moving forward that much, but the car was just so so eager to get into that downshift and get into position to really snap your head back if yeah. you wanted it. I actually love getting this car and I just shifted it into, I've been driving the automatic mode uh, because the car was still warming up, but getting it into the manual mode, you really get more down into the essence of the car and hearing it at the higher revs. I mean, the funny thing is that's only 4,000 RPM. Yeah, I mean, it we're, we're, we're at 35 miles an hour <laughs> right now. Such it's glorious. Was, that was mild provocation. No, nothing aggressive. Yeah, but it it tells a story. It does tell a story. It tells a story that any driver would want to read. That's oh, for yeah. sure. That's completely true. Coming in, hitting a couple of quick downshifts. But it's but it's right on the edge. I mean, it's right on the edge. It, it's that it's that knife edge sharpness that you feel 
when you're shifting the gears, you feel like you could, you could, at the slightest push of your throttle, you could edge the car over and put it exactly where you wanted it to be. And the engine is a, is right there behind your responses, so it's not a turbo where it's where it's a latency when you do that, or then it's late and you get a big surge of torque. But it's this it's this knife edge scalpel like placement in which you could do with the car, and then and then the. The weight of the steering wheel is slightly lighter than than other cars that I've I've been in, but but still very tactile. Alrighty, time to switch your roof. I'm looking forward to this one. <laughs> I know <laughs> you are. I know you are. We are in sport mode. Into gear. Let us go. Tell you what, the steering is surprisingly light at slow speed. It is. The way it just points, but then even at that speed, 20 odd miles an hour, it's already You still get tremendous feedback. You still yeah. get great feedback. I'm gonna go straight into manual as soon as we've got the road clear. We can pull out. There's a lot of traffic. It's the afternoon in a busy city. Worst possible time to go out in a 780 PS, 770 brake horsepower Ferrari. Well, it's a, it's a good chance to, to test the ability to dodge oncoming and ongoing traffic. It's so raw immediately. I mean, instantly in here, you feel like you are driving something that is just crazy. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that giggle, that's the like, <laughs> And the shifts. Now, I said I'd driven an 812 comp. This is rawer. This is so much rawer. <laughs> oh, this is what I remembered. Thank you already for letting me just drive this. Even if I had to stop now and get out right now, I would already be kind of, well, that was, that's taught me or reminded me of what I hoped it was going to remind me of. This is when I want to. This is when I'm, I love it when people get me out of the office. When they get me out of the office to go drive a, a, a TDF. The engine braking is so aggressive as well. It really pulls down. Oh, under the tunnel. The sound under the tunnel. And that was at 10 miles an hour. Yeah, literally second to first gear at 10 miles per hour. I mean, just at 20 miles an hour in second gear. <laughs> and this is in sport mode. So you see if you turn the Manatino to race. But, but, but this, isn't this the thing though? How to get a great supercar experience without going triple digit speeds everywhere. Yeah, I love that's a car. The key to, that's the key to this experience. Completely, and I love a car where if you shift mid-range, it's just as fun as at the red line, or nearly as fun as at the red line. Cars that don't have that. <laughs> just awesome. <laughs> Cars that don't have that feel just don't give you the same satisfaction, really, from driving them. Um, in race mode, this is so sharp. The shifts are bonkers. And I, and I think it should all be noticing, notice that, that, that this is all happening between 45 and 60 miles an hour. That's where we are. That's the range we're in. And we're having this much fun. And we're giggling this much. I'm, I have been at the wheel of this car for less than a mile right now. And I am instantly thinking that it is one of the best things I've driven in recent times. It's, it's this sense of madness that the engineers in Maranello, and test drivers and everybody involved in it just said, yeah, we'll do that. We'll give that a go. You know, why not? <laughs> the Italian way. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and they let it be unleashed on the streets like this. Yeah. You, you feel like they were they were uh, they worked late in their offices without much oversight from their bosses, yeah. and they said, "Let's see what we can do if we really get crazy." It's exactly that, and I feel almost for the comp now. They've had to dial it down a touch. They've had to make it of, more accessible. They've had exactly. to make it more accessible for people, and it means it can't do that. I mean, just no. Probably doesn't come across on the mics, but the slow speed under the tunnel there is. I don't know, the prequel to this. Jeez. <laughs> and, and what about the little 
pop the the, yep. the pop it gives you on your back. Every, Every time you're going through, you can feel it through the seats. You can feel the shifts because they are super aggressive in race. You also feel the car squirming. You did. Like that's not full throttle by no. any stretch oh, no. of the imagination. Oh, no. But on every shift you feel just a little wiggle, you know, it's just reminding you, reminding you that if you if you give it a little too much, it's going to uh, say, uh-huh. Get kind of snake-like. <laughs> yeah, this snake-like. is obviously I'm not gonna turn it into CT off and uh, full ESC off. But if you were to, that's where it's gonna get completely out of shape. And I remember when the first reviews of the TDF came out and people were driving them, and the first journalists were saying basically that this is a car that's going to kill you. If you don't know what you're doing. Feel the turning radius when you go around even at a slow speed, how yeah. tight it is. First car with rear wheel steering, the first Ferrari ever Unreal. when they introduced it. This is utterly ridiculous. I remember when I, I, I drove one the first time six or seven years ago, my friend Muck Collectors in Germany. Um, and I drove the car and I, I, I couldn't believe I had harnesses and everything, so even even crazier you could say, but I couldn't believe that they had made this thing. And then when you drive the 812 super fast, it has like 90% of what the TDF has, right? but it's missing that last spark. It is. And I think while the comp is a faster and more capable of everything car, it still actually doesn't quite do what this does. No, no it does not. I need to get back behind the wheel of one ASAP to, to kind of check myself on that but this is you were saying when we drove here earlier the weighting of the steering wheel at this speed it feels so rewarding it just feels like it's it's all there it's all ready for you and you know, one of my favorite things with the Ferraris you come to a standstill is to hold the downshift pedal and it just goes down through that's the gears awesome. that's awesome no it, talking required during no. that time build the revs <laughs> awesome. It's such a delicate shift as well. There's a kind of precision and refinement to it. I'm a big fan of this kind of gearbox. I think they got it very right with this. It's also though the, how do I say this, the impracticalities of the car, the firmness, the awkwardness in a way of driving it, those add elements to the whole experience. They add elements to what makes it something so dramatic. Well, and you said this earlier, but when you, you're hearing all the rocks, you're feeling every little nuance of the pavement, every irregularity in the pavement, both through the steering wheel and through the suspension and the way it communicates it. It's not chattery, it doesn't skip over bumps, it just lets you kind of feel every nuance of that bump. And I, and I think that's the thing, it never lets you forget what the what the focus is for this car. It's not an everyday car. No. Unless you want to go out and 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 drive crazy every day. But but it is a it is a it is a experience. And I think I think that says says it all. It really really does. And then you pull the window down under a bridge. Second gear downshift under a bridge. I mean, it's Freddy Krueger. When you let the windows down, you start shifting the thing under a bridge. There's no modification to this exhaust system either. This is exactly the way it came from the factory. Which is and, also uh, incredible. That which is also incredible. Are able to, to pull that off. Obviously, this was introduced back in, I can tell you, it was October 2015 because I actually went to the Finale Mondiale in Italy. I'd only just purchased my first Ferrari, an FF a couple of weeks before, right. and I drove it down to Italy in the first month of ownership to the launch event of this, which was really cool back when I remember Sebastian Vettel was driving the car out on circuit and doing all sorts of donuts and stuff, which would be, not now. <laughs> <laughs> Time and a place. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is. We did see a guy jump up on the median with his truck here earlier, but we won't be doing that in this car. <laughs> <laughs> but no, ever ever since then, they they, there was massive demand for this when it was brand new. When the TDF had launched, prices mm-hmm. flew up, but they really softened. They really, they came down to about half of what they were. They did. As, I guess, people were selling them off before their 8 tail competency onies would arrive. Right. There was less demand for the market in general, but then in the last couple of years, 
I guess people, one, can't get 812 comps, mm -hmm. so that's supported these, but two, they realize how good this car is, how good the TDF is. Oh yeah, and, and I think three, the horizon of uh, available cars like this being yeah. produced yeah. is just, it's gone. It's gone. With, there's not that opportunity anymore. So you've, you've got to look back. And as you look back and you look around at the landscape of cars produced over the last five or six years, this represents kind of the pinnacle yeah. of that. I know we're about to go under a bridge again, so I'm, I'm doing a slight window down. <laughs> I'm preempting. <laughs> just, just a second to first gear pop here. Wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> at 10 miles an hour. Yeah. You're good. So, and then with the windows still down. It's so violent. That's one of the things that I think makes it so fun. That massive kick you get on shifts in race, but even in sport. If you want to be docile, you go into wet, right? And then, yeah, do you feel that? How much softer it is? Oh, yeah. a mad craving for a TDF. The only problem is I don't think I can afford a TDF. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be honest. <laughs> Let's just split one. Let's just split yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> it's only 50% of this one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh gosh. Well, I, I, I think we will, as the years go on and we think back to this experience, we'll, we'll continually be talking about wow, do you remember that TDF that, that we drove? Remember that TDF experience? Because there won't be a lot of cars that'll come up in conversation that you can you can have that same dialogue about. It's, it's really hard to completely portray how it feels being in this. I mean, we're, we're obviously saying it, but I think it would be easy to assume that we're just like making up words but it's genuinely what it's like. It's genuinely how truly epic Ferrari managed to do all of like, this, this, I've lost my English. No, I'm not no. even making sense. I'm not coherent anymore. Our last little acceleration before we head back. Gently does it. <laughs> Just letting the uh, you know, revs build up. Just. Mega sound, absolutely Just, mega sound. I don't. <laughs> that may be one of the best streetcar sounds that I've ever heard. I mean, I would put it right up there in top five. Yeah. You feel it all, it's wonderful. All right, let's head back. Let's do it. Sadly. Unfortunately, <laughs> all good things must come to an end, as, as this one this one will as well, but it's been an it's immense been pleasure. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, what a drive. A huge thanks to Bert and also Jonathan here at Merit Partners for letting me get behind the wheel of this machine. That was epic beyond words. Now I had slightly misremembered, the first car I drove wasn't actually Muck Collectors. And by the way, you might have spotted, there are new cars that have arrived in the short time we've been out, which we're gonna need to go and take a look at. But no, the first TDF was actually a friend's blue car. When I was over at the Pagani factory, I got behind the wheel off camera for a first experience, then drove Muck Collectors car in Germany, but also drove a few years back, Greg B's car in Italy as well, the car in Verde GB23 Aparco. Now, all of those drives were, I want to say four or five years ago, and you often wonder, have you remembered correctly what a car was actually like? I've been spoiled to drive so many different cars, obviously 812 Superfast, GTSs, Competizione, 599 GTOs, all the different Ferrari V12 platform cars, and I had this memory in my mind of what the TDF is actually like, but being behind the wheel, within seconds, it all came flooding back. Instantly, this car came flooding back to me, and I should probably talk more about this in the near future with an 812 Competizione. I think it might be this one, but we'll come to that. We'll come to that. While we are here, come on through, because not just any old car that's arrived. Firstly, this spectacular Irish Green 993 project that they've been working on for a customer. And then also over here, this is a bit of me, Guards Red 918 Spider Visac package has just casually rolled in while we're here. I also need to point out that Mir Blue GT3 Touring over there, sea blue, dark blue, looks gorgeous as well. And just 
the whole space here at Merritt Partners. This is such a cool venue. This setup is exactly what I have in my mind. The lounge downstairs with the glass walls through to the cars, the upstairs chill out area to go along with it. The fact that cars are underneath the mezzanine, which means that you can look down and see the noses of them poking out as well. That's reminiscent of what we've done with the halo space at the Museum. It's a brilliant setup and what an array of cars. What a fabulous display of cars that they have here and what a beast in the form of this. TDFs are in seven figures for good reasons. They are extraordinary. I'm going to go away reflecting on this one. <laughs> that was right up my street. NAB12, rawness, a car for special occasions. You're not going to want to drive one of these all the time as we talked about. That's not what it's for in the slightest. But when you do drive it, my word, you're going to remember it. You're going to remember that drive. And that's what these cars should be all about. For now, though, that is all. A big thanks to Merritt Partners for letting me come down to drive this car and to share with you as well, in full for the first time, their new lounge and office space that they've set up as well with some brilliant machinery in there too. But for now, that is all. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate your support as always, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!